I made a game using only AI generated art and none of you noticed. A few weeks ago, I posted a two and a half hour long tutorial video where I show you how to create a full project using the 1.0 version of Unity's data oriented technology stack. That video has now been viewed over 15,000 times Thank you very much for that, by the way. And not one of you even had a sneaking suspicion that any, let alone all the textures in this game were created using an AI. We're talking the zombies, the brain, the tombstones, the ground, the fence around the graveyard, even those hills off in the distance and the starry night sky are all textures generated by an AI algorithm. So in today's video, I wanna talk about why using AI art is going to be such an amazing tool for me going forward and why you may want to consider it in your game. I also do wanna talk about some of the disadvantages advantages and considerations you need to make when thinking about using AI art for your game. And so actually, before I even do that, let me just do a quick overview on what I mean when I say AI generated art. So when I say AI generated art, I'm specifically referring to the stable diffusion algorithm is what I use to generate these images and textures. So basically the way that this works is there's a local instance running on my system and I can interface it through a web browser. And in there I can enter some prompts for this AI algorithm. And then along with those prompts, I can select a bunch of different options about how I kind of want the AI art to be generated. Should it you know, follow the prompt very closely or should it be a little bit more loose? There's also a very important option, the tiling box, and that will basically allow the textures to be tiled so they'll have you know seamless textures that you can tile over and over and over again. And overall, it's a pretty simple interface and then you hit generate and you just wait a little bit and the images are generated. Now, depending on you know some of the parameters that you set, it can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to generate any one of these images. And that's on my machine. I'm using an RTX 3070 as my graphics card, which is a pretty powerful card and it works well for this. And you can use these AI algorithms to generate a bunch of different textures and images, ranging from anything super basic like a dirt texture all the way to something crazy wacky like Darth Vader riding a unicorn. I even asked the AI algorithm to generate a new YouTube logo for me, so stick around to the end to see what kind of ridiculous things that it came up with. And if you are interested in generating AI art of your own, I'd recommend doing your own research because there are a bunch of different options out there that will be best suited for your needs. I will have a link in the description of the particular GitHub repository for the stable diffusion instance that I'm running on my machine. But again, you will need a fairly decent graphics card if you do want to generate these images anytime soon. Now, if you don't have a powerful enough graphics card or you don't want to go through the trouble of setting up a stable diffusion instance on your own machine, there are a bunch of online services that will allow you to generate AI images for free or little cost. One of them that I do want to shout out is Pixela, which was created by fellow game dev content creator Sam Yam. It's basically like a search engine that you can use to locate seamless textures that you can use in your game. Really cool service because it allows you to upload any textures that you generate with AI art. So I'm definitely going to be uploading a bunch of the textures that I've generated while I've been playing around with Stable Diffusion. Okay, so back to my Dots 1.0 tutorial project that I made using AI generated art. And so the reason that I really wanted to do this for this tutorial in particular, because I know this 1.0 tutorial, you know, is going to be a very massive popular tutorial, especially as Dots becomes much more mainstream. And again, I kind of wanted to release that video to be basically be like a base baseline of dots 1.0 and so I wanted something that's just you know a little bit more than just kind of like a, a random colored pill party like I have in some of my other tutorial videos which you know I think is fine for the kind of simplicity but I think it's you know a little bit better and kind of makes it a little bit more engaging and lifelike if we can actually have some you know cool art in the game that makes people you know actually feel like they're making a real game project even if the art isn't like you know perfect and obviously nowhere close to like AAA standards or anything like that but it just kind of gives people People that like you know feeling that they're actually creating something rather than just kind of like messing around with some tech demo because I think when there's actually like you know some level of art in the game again not just using the like you know grid box prototype materials on just some you know primitive shapes you know people can kind of start to see and think about how these concepts can be used in a real game project and how you might achieve some particular results in a game but really the number one reason why I think AI generated art is going to be such an incredible tool for me going forward is that I have full rights to redistribute any of this art that I generate. So basically what that means is if I were to say, you know, download some art from the internet or purchase something off the asset store, sure, I can use that in a commercial project and it would, you know, look really good in the game and everything like that. However, I wouldn't actually have the rights to redistribute that. So basically what that means is when I provide project files with my project, you know, I include all the art and everything like that alongside them. 
And if I were to, you know, purchase something on the asset store, I wouldn't be able to actually, you know, redistribute that through the project files because that would basically go against the terms of service and someone could come after me and sue me. Because now if I'm say, you know, redistributing those art assets, then now people would have those art assets without, you know, essentially paying for them or having like the legal rights to actually, you know, use those in their own project. So then the next option would be, you know, of course I can create my own art. And frankly, I just don't have the time to put in a whole bunch of artistic effort towards my uh, tutorial videos and I'm not like a traditionally trained artist or someone who's like naturally inclined to be super good at art I'm not saying that I can't be if I don't put in the time for it but you know there's only so many hours in the day and there are other things that I'd rather be spending my time doing and just you know creating art for my tutorial videos is not one of them right now of course another option would be that I could hire someone to create art for me and that's something that you know I'd like to do at some point but just you know I do not have the funding at the time to hire someone who can kind of you know create art for me on a regular basis also the thing with hiring a dedicated artist is the iteration time is definitely going to be much slower than doing something like AI generated art you know of course because someone is custom making something from scratch you know it could be a few days before I even see the first iteration of this and if there are any changes that I want made you know it could be another day or two until those changes are actually fully implemented and you know I like to make my tutorials on a pretty tight schedule you see that I'm putting out videos almost every week here and so I really need to have the ability to you know get something up and running quickly get it in the game so I can get the tutorial kind of in the works and out to you as quickly as possible. And frankly, AI generated art just solves all those problems. I have full redistribution rights. It doesn't cost me anything other than, you know, maybe a few extra cents on my energy bill. And the iteration time is extremely quick. Again, we're talking, you know, seconds to minutes to generate some art. Typically what I do as I'm working along is I'll, you know, have some ideas for some prompts. I'll go ahead and type them in hit the generate button and then I'll go back and work on something else. So maybe I'll be like programming or something like that. And then I'll wait until I hear my graphics card kind of wind down. And then, you know, when it's not cranking super hard, then I know that the art is probably finished and I can go back to the other window and take a look at the art that it spit out. Again, you know, maybe I might want to, to tweak some things here and there. So I'll kind of make some adjustments to, you know, some of the prompts or things like that. Go ahead and hit generate again, go back to my work and again, just kind of repeat the process. So it's kind of cool that it can just be kind of like, you know, working in the background as I'm doing some other things. Now, again, this AI art isn't always perfect. You know, sometimes you might end up with like a human with three arms or something like that. But it is good enough to the point where you can kind of say, maybe grab a couple images and kind of use those as like reference images and concept art that you could send off to a real artist who actually, you know, knows what they're doing. You could say, hey, I want, you know, this kind of part of this and I want, you know, to take this part of that. And then we can kind of, you know, create this, this kind of creature here or whatever. And then at least in theory, that kind of saves a little bit of back and forth between you and the artist until you get your, you know, actual vision of what you had in mind. And by the way, if you do want to use any art in your game that was created by a real human, a great place to do so is the Unity Asset Store. Right now, Unity Asset Store is hosting their Black Friday sale, which is going on all the way until December 7th, where they have over 500 assets at 50% off and another 100 plus assets, which are going to be on flash deals, which are going to be discounted for 70% for 24 hours. And then after that, they're going to be at a 50% discount for the remainder of the sale. The Unity Asset Store is my favorite place to go for any handcrafted art that I want to put into any of my projects. There's also a ton of tools in there that can make your development experience a whole lot better. So I'd highly recommend going and check out their sale. By the way, you can also use my coupon code TurboMaceGamesBF22 at checkout for an additional 10% off your order of $100 or more. And thank you to Unity for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now to talk about some of the disadvantages of using AI art. Well, number one is this going to be very, very random. And again, you can get into some weird situations where you know you generate a person with three arms or you know you like try to generate a dirt texture and then you end up getting like you know a dirt texture but there's like random cars and trucks on there for some reason and so I think that as I start to use these AI tools more and more and figure out you know the prompts and the different types of values and how to you know tune these a little bit more you know I'll be able to generate the result that I have in mind a little bit better but still you'll always get some really weird wacky things that just make no sense and again a lot of times these images are like good starting points but pretty much all these images that I 
used for this project. I actually dropped into Photoshop and just had to make, you know, some simple little edits so they could be a little bit more compatible with the meshes in the game. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to like map these to like, you know, really crazy UVs or anything like that just because of, you know, it typically just generates, you know, flat images. So that's why I was basically only using these with like simple primitive shapes. Also, when I'm generating seamless textures, I use this tool on the web where you can just kind of drop in a texture that it generates. And then you can basically just kind of control the size of this so you can see, you know, how it looks at different sizes. I think this is a really good tool to have because you can see that something like this, it's probably not going to tile super well because it's very repeating. You know, although it is a really cool texture and I did want to use this for my ground, I didn't end up using this because again, it's very repeatable and you can see the exact same things over and over and over again. So this is the texture that I actually ended up using for the ground texture. You can see that, you know, it is a seamless texture, so you can't see, you know, exactly the seams between each of the textures, you know, but there is kind of this one little rock here that if you look very closely, you can see where it's repeating. But other than that, it's not too bad. You know, maybe if you were so inclined, you could kind of go and clean this up in Photoshop just a little bit to um, you know, just kind of break that up a little bit. But again, this is just going to be like a ground texture and it's going to be broken up with a bunch of tombstones. So it's all, it's going to be really difficult to tell that this is a seamless texture because most people won't be paying that close of attention. Another thing that I haven't been able to figure out how to do super well is pixel art where you have like, you know, very rigid lines and everything like that. You don't get the best art. I have seen some people get some pretty decent looking pixel art online. So this is something that I do want to try out with a little bit more because I am working on a project, which you should see within the next couple weeks here. I do want to have kind of a pixel art style for some of the elements in it. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that one because that's going to be a fun video. So anyways, as promised here, a couple YouTube logos for the channel that the AI decided to generate. I basically, you know, put in, you know, new logo for a YouTube channel called Turbo Makes Games. And you can see that it came up with this. Here's another one that it came up with. Again, not super cool or interesting. <laughs> Here's a silly one here. To ooh! <laughs> and then just another totally weird one that it came up with here. And another thing you can do with these art generators is put in basically a source image and then using that source image along with the prompt, you can kind of generate some output results. And so you can see here that I put in the regular Turbo Mace Games logo and had it generate kind of like a synth wave version of it. So you can see that like, you know, some of these images are pretty cool, but again, they're not something that I would actually use for a new logo for my YouTube channel. I, again, you know, if there was something that I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea here, you know, maybe I'd take this and I'd send it over to the artist who actually made my logo or someone who might be kind of an expert in this type of style. So anyways, for now, I'm going to be sticking with the same Turbo Mace Games logo because I like it quite a bit. Anyways, let me know what you think of AI generated art in the comments section below. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.